Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Thanks for coming by today. I'm starting mm -hmm. my final vlog for October. Got the kiddo in the back having some after school snack. Been sitting to read just for just a little bit um, before I get the evening stuff going. So I'm gonna try to finish up Halloween this week and then hopefully some other stuff. But I'll um, I still need to read Maggie's Grave too. So I gotta get that too. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna dig into this. I have finished uh, part two. So now I need to start part three, which, um, like I said, they're all kind of like, I think there's four parts in here. They're all these little kind of connected stories in set in this town of Orangefield. Um, and there's just spooky things going on in Orangefield. And perhaps there's this sort of, I don't know what he is quite is yet. I haven't quite figured that out, but this sort of entity, I don't know, thing, look out, Samhain that is, you know, creeping around, I don't know. I'm really enjoying it, so. <laughs> Alrighty. Hey, hey, today is, what's today, Tuesday, the 29th, is that correct? <laughs> I've just finished Halloween. Yeah, this was good. I really liked this. I really like Al San Antonio, I think. So, it's not my second book by him. Just, yeah, just really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, this is the start of a series of these books that are set in a town called Orangefield, which like really goes into Halloween and pumpkins. Pumpkins are their things. There's so many like pumpkin farmers and they have this big pumpkin festival every year and it, it, it's their thing, right? And, um, but there is an evil lurking in Orangefield, which, um, has some ulterior motives. I'll just say that. And, um what we find out through this is um, how he's, how this entity is uh, sort of persuading people to do something to help, I don't know, start something. I'm not really sure. This is book one. I'm hoping we get a little more answers in the, the subsequent books. I'm not sure. I don't have book two. I have book three, oddly. I think, I don't think I have book two. I, don't, I can't remember now. But anyway, <sighs> I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So, um, October vibes, Halloween vibes, the, the last, uh, you know, this little section takes place on Halloween night. Um, yeah, it was good. It was really good. I just really enjoyed it. So I'll definitely recommend, um, if you see it out and about, pick it up. It's a good one. Um, what else have I got going? I've got this finished cross stitch. I don't think I've showed this yet. Look at this. Look at this cute little witch riding a little mouse look at the little tail got some flowers on this little vase cute right yeah this is a design from barbara anna designs barbara anna really is one of my favorite designers are you know she's very whimsical and things that i really like her style and i love yeah the little witch so cute. and this was in I don't know, I'll say it just because I have it right here. The 2018 issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine. Um, so yeah. There was some extra bits around the this part. <laughs> that I didn't, I didn't stitch that. I just, I left those out because I just kind of liked it how it was. So. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really excited. I think it's just a scrap piece of linen that I had. I, pull, I don't know, probably some sort of fabric of the month 
when I used to do fabrics of the month and that kind of thing. I don't know. But yeah, I really like that. So cute. So two cross stitch finishes for the month. That's fun. What else? I've got pumpkin chicken chili in the crock pot. It smells delicious in here. So we'll see how that turns out. Other than that, I have not, I really haven't been watching anything spooky lately. Gotta get back on that. Um, so I don't know, I don't know. Let's we'll see what, what we get up to. <laughs> All right. Ready to finishing Halloween finishes this prompt. Halloween, Halloween. Oh, I'm feeling bad. I don't think I'm going to finish my board. I probably should have been double rolling. Let's do a double roll. One. Oh my God. Five. Six. One, four, five, six. I'm gonna actually scoot on over to Katrina's Carnivals. Maybe at least one of Katrina's prompts <laughs> before the end of the month. Let me scoot over to Katrina's prompts here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, hereditary. We want an occult book on me. Okay, so we've got that. Okay. Listen to the audio today at work for a really kind of short thing called Another Name for the Devil by Mason Deaver. It's an audible, like original thing. And because I was looking for, you know, something for that occult prompt book, you know, for the for the game board. And yeah, it was pretty good. It was like um this it focuses on this one, you know, kind of young man who's at college in New York City. And um he I guess you know, had this you know, sort of boyfriend in high school and they, they, you know, they moved away, but they had this, you know, they were, you know, pretty serious there for a bit and, you know, kind of first love thing, kind of, oh, my kid's about okay. to you, hold on. <laughs> kid's home from school, look at this cool pumpkin that he did, look at some glittery, isn't that cute? Yeah, so that little story I just finished, mm. sorry. Can you be any more shaky? Yeah, so <laughs> kid high school, you know, kind of first love moves away and they run into each other mm, one fateful night. And he's like, is this you? Is this you? Yeah, and they kind of get back together again and learn what, you know, what everybody's been up to and um, kind of start their relationship back up again. But the, the guy that had moved away, and he's now you know, the, I forget names, I'm terrible with names, you know that, um, so that he's, um, you know, getting back into what he's studying is sort of demonology and, um, religious things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, he's trying to summon a demon and this other guy gets wrapped up in all of that. It goes from there. It, it gets a little wild. It gets a little wild. And, uh, and just this, just this short, you know, I think it was like, I don't know, on the speed I was listening to, maybe it was like an hour and a half-ish, you know? It was a pretty effective story. So if you have Audible, um, give it a listen. It was pretty good. Um, so yeah, so guess what? We get to roll the dice. All right, so I'm done with this prompt. I read the occult book. I am going to go twice again. So three. Mm. I only gave you mm. five. Okay. <laughs> I'm never going to make it around this board. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Let's come over here. here. <laughs> Let's see what Katrina's five prompt is. Sometimes dead is better. Read or oh grief horror. Hmm. Let's see what I can find for that. Uh, I didn't realize season two was out now. I forgot. Ah! I loved season one. Can't wait to watch this now at some point.
<laughs> Probably not today. Okay. Initial thoughts of his house. I do not recommend this lightly. It is absolutely heartbreaking and I am sobbing and it is wonderful and watch it, but holy shit, prepare yourself. Uh, if you were at all <laughs> sensitive like me, cried everything. We're following a family that are fleeing Sudan and they end up in the UK as refugees. They are given this house to live in. Something has followed them and uh, they are being haunted and it is really sad. It is really sad. It is heartbreaking. Um, but it is really important, I think, to, to just... <laughs> and genuinely, some very genuine, genuinely spooky parts. It is really good, you guys. <laughs> so it's on Netflix if you have it and... That's my recommendation, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes you pre order something like a while back and it arrives like this big DVD box set collection of the world era for ATs. Y'all know my favorite K-pop group. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. It's got five, uh, five discs marking the different, like there's like tour, like a uh, tour concert stuff in here and like behind the scene, like making things, you know, stuff like that from the different eras of the world albums that they put out comes with a, I mean a giant photo book that um you know just goes through the different photos of the era the, the concerts all that good stuff and then there's the whole diary book Again, very chunky, which documents all of the lore from the era, is uh, presented to us in Korean, Japanese, and English, which is nice. Very nice book. I can't, 
I, I've actually gotten a bit off on their lore, so that'll be fun. And it's not a photo car or a, a pug K pop thing unless you get extras. So we've got these little unit uh, postcards that came with it. I love that one. And this one, I kind of miss this green haired Yosang. And because I pre ordered, I got this special pre order benefit of this bonus postcard with Uyang and Mingi, so that's nice. So I've got, I can't wait to look at this photo book. It's so nice. I mean, it's very presented well, very put together nice, so yay, that's exciting. <laughs> Today's Halloween. I've got my Charlie Brown shirt on. Can you see it? I believe in the Great Pumpkin. Got Linus sitting here waiting for the Great Pumpkin. Linus is my favorite character, just so you know. I uh, got my bowl of candy over there, ready to go. So yeah, we're just gonna wait around for some trick-or-treaters. I watched a couple of spooky um, K-pop like, content shows that I've been, I kind of saved. Um, an episode of Run Jin and a, a spooky episode of Going 17, which they always do a really good spooky episode. And I'm always, I always laugh at them hysterically when they do it, it this one was no exception their episode trap very funny it's a good two-parter and then i did catch uh i watched a little bit of booktube today at work and then i i watched a watch party that kelsey hosted for halloween one of my also one of my favorite movies and actually it's been quite a couple years since i've actually watched it so i love that movie i love watching that movie it's so good yeah um so that's checked off the list. I don't have to worry about watch, trying to watch it tonight. I'm gonna try to watch it tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's kind of the day. It's Halloween. It's here, right? We wait all month, and it's here. So we'll probably get it, a bunch of trick or treaters tonight, um, which is fun. Uh, lot because last year at Halloween we had COVID, so we didn't even get to like participate in anything last year. So I can't wait to actually like see the trick or treaters tonight and stuff. My my kids like. He's a little too old. He doesn't, you know, he never really understood or grasped or really cared about trick-or-treat, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Um, and so last year, was kind of, we didn't go. And so I, I don't think he's probably interested in going again this year, which is fine. We can sit at home and pass out the candy and see all the all the kiddos dressed up and everything. Um, I've got my uh, decorations up out there and... Um, we usually put like a little speaker in the window and play like spooky music and spooky sounds and stuff. We like to creep out the kids. We're that house. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just kind of getting ready for Halloween night. I'll right, check you later. <laughs> Wait, I forgot. Because I did listen to a short story today at work. Um, Mary Ventura and the Ninth. <sighs> What's it called? Mary Ventura and the Ninth Kingdom. It's a short story by Sylvia Plath. I do have a copy of it upstairs. It's right over here. Um, like I said, it's a short story. It's like really one of the first, I think one of the very early short stories that she wrote when she was in college. And she sent it off to like a magazine and it was, um, it, you know, it, it was denied. It didn't get picked up to be published. I think at some point she kind of reworked it and redid it, renamed it, and I think it got published at some point. Uh, but then they released the sort of original version whenever this came out, you know, somewhere recently, I think, ish, we'll say. Um, I, if I can remember, I put the year here that it, they re-released this original version. Um, honestly, it was really good and kind of spooky, kind of unnerving. So we're following a young woman named Mary Ventura as her parents are putting her on a train. And um, it's like, you know, she's definitely being sort of coerced and like, like you have to get on the train and you follow it to the end and that, this is what you do, right? She's like, you know, but I don't really want to, you know, do I have to go, this kind of thing. And she gets on the train and there's other people on the train too. And they're going through this landscape that seems a bit, um, a bit soured you know there's like farmland that seems pretty desolate um some of these sort of train stops are not you know they're empty they're not being used anymore things like that and um yeah i mean i don't know and then she meets this woman in the 
you know, along the, the ride and um, she just begins to question, like, why am I on the train? What is the destination? Because we don't really know because she's making her way, like she mentions, like we're going through the sixth kingdom and the seventh kingdom and she has to ride it again to the end of the line, which is the ninth kingdom. And it's a one way ticket, right? And yeah, and so it's a short story. So it goes from there, but like I said, it is quite unnerving and you're definitely left with questions, but I think it's also left up to, for you to interpret uh, where is this train going and why are all these people willingly going on it, seemingly, you know, of their own will and kind of, you know, not really interested in asking the questions about where, why, you know, all that good stuff. So it was, like I said, actually pretty unnerving. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. So yeah. Will I read anything else tonight? I don't know. I really had wanted to read this book. Um, sorry. The Pumpkin Principle. If I, I'm going to try to maybe read this tonight. It is a teen, you know, teen preteen type of book. It's just going to be you know, silly fun. I feel like this camera is really blurry right now. I'm sorry. I think I probably have a smudge, but anyway, um, we will, we'll see if I get to it. I mean, they really, they're wearing such great clothes, you know, but we'll see. All right. So I read this book and I don't think I talked about it one single time. So let's just chat really quickly about it. I did listen to this on audio and then I woke up by Malcolm Devlin. I don't think I talked about this yet. What am I even doing? I don't know. So let's see. What is this about? Well, it's kind of like a plague story, you know, like a viral type of story, zombie-ish. So we're not like talking like typical zombies necessarily, but there are people that are kind of getting this virus, you know, thing that's going around. And it's almost kind of, it's some people aren't, you know, don't do anything, but some people kind of... I don't know how, how to explain it. It's like, turns them into, not zombies, kind of like violent kind of <laughs> monster things. How, but then some people, I think it's a perception thing. Like they think they are seeing things. It's how it affects people very differently. I don't know. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, but our main character is living at this facility of people that have been cured, you know, hashtag cured of this disease. And, um, um, and yeah, he kind of teams up with this woman who wants to escape and then they kind of see the world out there, which is very much kind of post-apocalyptic type of world, you know, thing. Um, you know, what's the truth? What's not the truth? What is this plague? And, um, how are you people... Uh, sort of it, it's just I think the seeing how the different people react to this like this disease or whatever that's going on right I think that's kind of the gist of this book but it's very interesting it's just really super interesting and um how how the world has changed and um Again, like what is true, what is not, where the lines are blurred between those things, um, how the how this virus has affected different people. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was really interesting, honestly. So it was, I, I enjoyed this a lot. So I mean, what, I don't know what more can you ask for, right? You, just to enjoy something. So yeah, <laughs> but I think I forgot to talk about it. So who are we talking about it? Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can read this book right now. <laughs> I'm in chapter, just in chapter two, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in the mood for this. It's from 1986, about these teens, they're seniors in high school. I don't know. I don't know if I'm in the mood for it, so I don't know. <laughs>
this is the giant bag that we bought. And 30 pieces. <laughs> and mm, what we have left of it. Looks like I got some snacking to do. Thank you.